doing that? I don't think they're going to do that. I can't control that. It's out of my control. What's up everybody welcome to another video in the ideal auto factory where we talk about everything rc's and vinyl wrapping today today i finally discuss my trip my experience with rc drag talk king of the streets 2023 drift competition in las vegas hosted by super g and rc drag talk man Finally, I get to, you know, actually share this with you. I've been trying to figure out how. Uh, first first and foremost, I sold my Rhino Max. So I don't have the Rhino Max anymore, but the Rhino Max is the majority of King of the Streets. You seen the GS300 body? This body goes on the overdose gum. So the iconic IFS, IRS GOM was in Las Vegas for the Super G competition, or shall I say for the drift event, I, I'd say that, as well as my Rhino Max. Those were the only two vehicles I brought because those are the only two vehicles I spent a lot of time with. What a time did I have. I, I, as I edited the video, the first half of that video, <clears throat> it's a little blurry, but it's it's such a it's jam-packed with good times and reminders of a good time that I had. I can't, I can't, I couldn't cut it out. So you'll see, if you go back and watch it again, I was at Prototype RC. That was where you saw the GS300 and the trains, pretty much, the drift trains. And then after that, I was at Slide Lines RC, where the winner of King of the Streets actually owns that place, Brett. So I met Brett, or 
you know, got to see who he is, I should say. Scale Magic, we got Steve and Joey uh, from Super G, Mike, <laughs> the, the Rhino Max guru <laughs> with the green Rhino Max. I met so many people. Uh, it was just crazy. Honestly, it's crazy enough. When I went to RCHQ and the hobby shop a couple months ago, I realized that in the video that I'm showing prior to me talking right now, I also met Vito because the pretend drift team livery was on that GR Super <clears throat> or a A90 Super, I should say. GR is a Corolla, I believe. Yeah. So and there were a couple other cars in there as well. I never, I didn't realize I drifted in the same, you know, drift train, you should say, as Steve from Super G until I watched that video and you know it's just it's not an overwhelming it's more like a wow you know I actually met those people and that was the commitment I made when I decided to go to Las Vegas and my wife allowed me to and you know we just we just enjoyed each other we enjoyed the time there and yeah so what was it like it was everything and then some i got my first rc drift competition experience on something other than carpet i was able to <clears throat> see what it's like to be around very competitive people uh one of the things on the track that people would say would be like you know certain people were bullies on the track but it's like kind of expected because you already know everybody's trying to cut throat not in a negative way but more like Yo, I'm drifting my hardest. I'm drifting my best. So if you can't keep up or if you're not drifting like how I'm drifting, then move out the way. You know, it's very different from a friendly vibe. And you can't, you you shouldn't be around that too much. Because then it turns into um, a different kind of environment for you. I feel like if you become a full-on competitive drifter, you'll never have fun. You may get to a certain place where you're chasing the achievements you're, you're going after certain goals but you might lose out on some things and personally that's not my goal but for others i mean you got people that travel the world you can make it there if you're that competitive and you keep winning but that's not what i was trying to do i wanted the experience i'm talking a lot and this is one of those videos where i gotta get a lot out because i'm not trying to hide anything or kind of like let something just fall by the wayside. So something else I'd like to point out is how great it was to hang around Mike. I hope I pronounce his name correctly because I just call him Mike all the time. Um, yeah, Mike Cronham or Mike Cronum. Cronum. Uh, you know, he's sponsored by Rhino Racing. He gets got the green Rhino Max. He's got a Rhino Max V1. He's got FPV things. He's got the the toot toot or Ute, what is it? The trike drift car. He's got a full on D WPL D body drift. Dude's got some of everything. I saw my first full option Gaum in person, and I was able to hold it. It was like what you know that of course somehow the Rhino Max is costing more than Gaum's. Whatever. Not going down that rabbit hole. Okay, back to what I was saying. Yeah, hanging around Mike, man. Hanging around, you know, just getting to know some of the people from Tech One Drift, Prototype RC, um, and just being around drifting like that for a consecutive amount of time, like eight hours at a time. It was just, it was just another level of wow. You know, being around people who put so many liveries on the car like prototype rc's livery like bruh i was just like blown away by the livery and as you or livery whatever you say it. and you know the environment of their drift tracks plenty of space to drift and also not enough space at the same time it was like the perfect mix you know if if you were feeling like i don't want to say overwhelmed if you were feeling like you were getting a little too you know, shoulder to shoulder with people just step outside, you know, there's a couple people got some cool cars. Um, and, you know, you hung out like that. And, you know, people drift until midnight and, and, you know, music playing and stuff. And trains. Trains. 
and people having the common courtesy to scream out sweeper or lipo or man on the track and everybody stops, you know, little things like that uh, was my first time experiencing those things. And I really enjoyed the kind of like engulfing myself in RC Drift on another level and then being rewarded with, okay, now no courtesies. Okay, now I know how fast people really go. Okay, now I see there's a whole bunch of people that really got sharks. Like, never seen so many sharks in my life. Megalodon, Hydra, whatever. You know, Godzilla, I don't know. So many sharks. So many sharks. It was insane. I just really enjoyed that. And it was nice to meet some people that were actually subscribed to this channel. You know, people that told me, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, that's all the way in Vegas. And, of course, you're like, we're in 2023. you got social media. You can be talking to somebody on literally the other side of the world right now. But to know and walk by and people recognize me, not saying I'm trying to be famous. It was just like, wow, somebody actually supports. It made me feel like I was in the right place. You know, like I actually committed to that. I'm, I saw Rock Bait Racing, that's Leo Moran, or Moran. I'm probably butchering people's names, I'm sorry. It's all through text most of the time. Don't do phone calls with these people to get the voice, you know, going. So, now that the Rhino Max is sold, I'm just gonna summarize pretty much what's happening in the video. I pretty much, said that I was going to retire the Rhino Max because it got put through a beating. The wheels were wobbling, not the bearings, and it was completely tight on the actual hub, but the wheel itself was wobbling. The Tetsujin wheels had, like, the tolerance has, had got out and gotten out of whack from how fast we were driving, and I even blew a whole wheel. Like, it, it obliterated. Then I show uh, basically like a comp, trick where you can ream out two holes like half body post half magnetic post to where your rear doesn't get knocked off and you know you disqualify yourself because you like did a wall ride or you know bat your body mounts in the back are basically solid and i had that on the rhino max when i was drifting because of course there was a lot a lot of wall riding a lot of like full sins that you know may have entered you into another dimension you could have destroyed your car if you were, if you were going too fast we had the grippiest tire on the market hf5 from ds racing on like concrete the like parking lot concrete it was crazy super fast super fast and King of the Streets, very uh, special tires. The tire lettering said KOTS 23, King of the Streets 23. So I got another set of those. And I pretty much got everything except the Rhino Max itself. So I'm going to grab that. I have the body. Here's the body. You see that's my number four. I was the fourth person to pr basically put my, put my money down. And I'm going to go. I'm going to Vegas. And I'm all the way. On the, on the East Coast. Limited Traction hooked me up with a cool slap sticker there. Um, yeah, this is the Forge Carbon. Now, this might be the first time y'all seeing this body, honestly. And there goes those two posts in the back. So what I had was, you can see the magnets right there. So that magnet would be screwed down into the car, the actual chassis, and then you would have the post kind of like, boop, just stick through. Here's my King of the Street wheels. You can see they still say KOTS Drift 23. All right, here is some footage from the King of the Streets Drift competition, the actual track. You can see Tech One Drift getting some laps in. And then also the wall there, the amazing wall, the whole way around. This track was huge, it was really nice. Had some nice accessories on it. This is the group photo of all the participants. Everyone has their number tag getting ready to do the competition. But you got to get the beauty shots before feelings get hurt, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so RC drag tops, that is 15. So we're following protocol. Okay, we're gonna shuffle it 15 times. So when we shuffle it, it's gonna change it all around. The number next to your name is your car number. The number on the left of everything is just the, the roster, how it's gonna be. So we're shuffling, you can watch it on the big screens. We're gonna shuffle up 15 times. You guys can follow along, count along. Here we go, 15 times, we're for the bracket. I think you might have to start or no? Is shuffling? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. Is this it? That's 15. This is it. This is the order. But yeah, that was the whole thing. Um, now let's get into the another part where I um I still get a little bit of like I get in my feelings about it, not in a bad way. Like I'm mad I I didn't win. It's more like a wow, I really don't have that much experience in competition, but I know how to drive. So. Best way I can describe it is, as I'm drifting in the lead, I can hold a line. I can do what I need to do. But in the follow, it's a whole nother world. You can have the fastest car and you can get in the follow position and you got to have a slow car and you can't be slow because your car is so fast. Unless you know how to tune, unless you know how to drive right. So after watching a whole lot and practicing a whole lot, I got put up against a D like RER hybrid. That chassis is the heaviest thing on the planet but it had to stay under a certain weight right for the competition either way d likes to slide really slow so when i went up to actually drift my car was set up to like chase alfredo chan and freaking joe durkey and you know brett it's set up to like run against those guys because i'm like oh yeah they're, they're all in competition i'm gonna be right next to them i'm gonna be the second guy you know i ain't got it. alfredo's been drifting for 10 years and here i come saying oh yeah i'm gonna be the guy that's just gonna knock them off so right there right behind them, drifting in tandem with the clouds you know the, the smoke and whatever yeah so no my first battle after the shuffle my first and only battle was against uh, I believe it's Frank. Frank. Either way, my first battle was up against a D-like RER hybrid from Tech One Drift. Man, I put the freaking gap sauce on him on the lead, right? So by default, it's like, okay, yeah, I got the other. The chaser has no proximity, so it's all down to my chase one, right? <laughs> I get in the chase position and I literally cannot get, I can't lose traction to get an angle. Cause as soon as I like lose traction, I like jet forward and I'm like past his door. I even get in front of the guy. I get in front of this guy as I'm chasing him. Now I'm like trying to get in the lead again. Total, total L, total zero on the run. Like, and the sad part is we had to go one more time because I'm not saying I did so well on my lead run that I'm like the best or something. But I did so well on my lead run. It was like my chase run was so horrible. It was like, no, we got to see that again because ain't no way. Um, at least that's how I felt. Judges basically, you know, determined that you can't even get a good, like, who's going to be – uh, moving on because there was no clear winner, obviously. So on the one more time, it was clear that I could not chase. The other vehicle could chase and lead. And that D-Light took like four people out because it was smooth and slower than everything else. And because of how slow it was, not saying that's the only thing, the, the driver was great. I am not knocking the driver. It's just that the thing is so smooth and so slow. If you're chasing something like that, your car has to be slow as well. Or you have to be able to drift it slower 
than you no are normally used to. On grippy tires. Yeah, that was something. My car was way too fast and it did not have enough. I couldn't break traction enough within a short amount of time to kind of stay with the vehicle um, on, a, on, a, on a grippy surface like that. And it tore my car apart. I borderline think you should lock tight some of your stuff if you're going to be driving on a surface like that. Because when I sat my Rhino Max back down and really went over it, there were so many things that were loose or didn't have a, uh, 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 like an actual screw in there. I, yeah, I think my front was steering by itself. It was this bad. But either way, I enjoyed my time. I enjoyed Las Vegas. I enjoyed the Super G crew and everything that happened there. There's no real track where I'm at. I got to drive like an hour and a half. Some of you may have to drive an hour and a half. So this is normal. And there is a nice track. There's a nice track an hour and a half away from me. Two hours almost. I like to say this, I, I really appreciated the, a, a good example of a business that provides RC drifting to a whole community. I saw three of them, Prototype, Slide Lines, and Super G, and all of them had their systems that were in place to make sure you could have fun, to make sure that track was uh, protected and you chose the right tire, and also ground rules, you know, it's just simple stuff. Uh, didn't actually go to Super G. I'm saying that track, the King of the Streets track, was the way everything was set up was really nice. Thank you for watching the video. It's kind of long. Not really. I don't want to say that in a way like, oh, you. I really wish you watch all the stuff through. I feel like I made this video for me. Like, I know I'm. I so appreciate you guys for watching these videos. Um, but I made this video for me because I finally, like, I went there. I finally got to experience West Coast drifting. I don't know where RC drifting originated. I don't know all the stuff about it, like, to the T of, like, where everything started. But I do know when I started, I got the Rhino Max from Super G. I got so many other things from Super G. Uh, a lot of the talking that I did was in the Super G uh, Facebook group and then slowly I started branching out to worldwide RC drip so when it came down to a competition and uh, you could win three thousand dollars why not why not take that opportunity um, and just go for it all and so I did I enjoyed it and this video is all about that and I'm so appreciative to have met people support people still to this day and you know meet more people along the way in this hobby so thank you for watching the video i really appreciate it keep god first i will catch you on the next one Let me know. You can also purchase uh, off the website. If you don't, if you don't get uh, 